day the markets take another dip to restart and refuel this boom boy ship. My dreams may be futile, but this you say, well, my. So my dreams may be futile, but Bitcoin bull keeps charging away. Oh, you sit here, a Bitcoin bull keeps charging away. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're listening to Any Observation, the, the best, best NFT, crypto, and gaming podcast ever. With your host, Anders Bjork. And we are live. Everything should be good. You should get all, everyone should hear us. And we are here today with, uh, I'm, I, like I have said before about your name that I'm not going to learn it this year. I'm not going to say it. Your name is also Dangel, but uh, everyone knows you by Dish. Uh, which is one of those names that I every time you write in the chat, I'm, I I co complain that I can't pronounce it. And now you have it. Absolutely. We have you here. So happy to have you on. How, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, just been uh, doing some last minute changes to the Discord and stuff, getting ready for Saturday's Alpha. Um, yeah, I've just been working, <laughs> constantly working. <laughs> Uh, well, well, that's how it should be. Uh, it, it's uh, it's was fun. Um, so, pe people might not be aware of your project and might not be aware of everything you are doing or your background and everything. So let's start uh, start with the initial and and uh, just let people know uh, who are you? Who are Deej? Yeah, so uh, I'm Deej. Uh, I've been in WAC since 2020. Uh, joined initially through i was scrolling to twitter one day and i saw a dead mouse advertisement for uh, the dead mouse drop yeah uh, so i was like oh this looks interesting um I, i've i'm a physical collector of pokemon cards Yu -Gi -Oh cards and things like that so when i saw about digital collectibles i was i was already intrigued uh found myself on the wax cloud wallet uh created an account bought some dead mouse stuff with my brother uh yeah and it just pretty much went from there and then it's been a case of joining in every project that I possibly can since uh, was there throughout all the Our Planet days and the ups and the downs of everything that's happened on WAX pretty much since then as well. So, but yeah, so been a player since 2020 and a, and like a member of the community since 2020 and then uh, started to experience, like I say, the goods and the bads and thought, well, maybe there's a space for trying to put all of the goods together and try and keep away the bads in my own project. So, uh, so that's where that sort of came from. And, and so you found Wax uh, with, with Dead Mod. I was in December uh, that release. I love it because I'm a big uh, EMD uh, music fan. So I was very happy to see some, some bigger names in the music industry coming here. Uh, but is that your first time into crypto or, or did, you, did you dip your toes before? Uh, so at the beginning of COVID was when I first started um, playing around with stock shares and crypto uh so that was like 2019 uh, 20. um sort of found spare time working from home and things like that so i started buying and selling trading day trading um and just messing around but n nothing nfts wax was my first wax was my first um, venture into nfts and then i've sort of dipped my toes in like OpenSea and, and, and Cardano and things like that. And then, and then always come back to Wax and Wax is my home. Like there's nothing that competes with Wax in my eyes. It's by far the best blockchain. Yeah. I, I, like NFTs are fun in a lot of places, but for some reason the, the marketplaces I go back to and the projects I keep coming back to are those on Wax. I, I yeah. do buy NFTs on, on a lot of different blockchains and I want to, I do it. Partly because I want to learn, I want to keep up to date, but I also want to be uh, try these ecosystems and see what happens. Uh, yeah. And and so far, uh, Wax has been the the most convenient way to do everything uh, with NFTs for me. 
Uh, yeah, okay, I, I, I totally agree. Like, there's there's nothing that competes it's when you're looking at like the volume of transactions and and what we're able to do in terms of being a creator on Wax with the smart contract capabilities and and the um, like the even down to like the marketplaces and the NFT creators that we've currently got and like when you look at Nefty Blocks and their and their drops um, features and their whitelisting features and things like that, there's to me, there's just no, it's a no brainer to, to create projects on Wax. Yeah, the, the tooling is awesome because it's like, to do a lot of the NFT releases on other blockchains, you need to know uh, some coding or you need to have someone that can do that. And, and if you don't know it, you also risk making mistakes. Uh, and on Wax, you can use already deployed smart contracts for other collections, with it, which is really nice. And we have the the shared market volume and everything. Uh, so that's awesome when you, when you can list NFTs on Nefty Blocks or on Atomic Hub or Wax Dash or NFT Hive and they appear on all of them. Yeah. Um, that's really nice. You can use the marketplace you like the most instead of only the one with most users, mm -hmm. um, which is really nice. And so, okay, w why did you feel like you wanted to create a game? Where did that start? Are you a gamer before or, or uh, what's the story? Yeah, so um, it's sort of twofold, really. So initially, I'd created a project on Wax called Kickback, um, which is still an active project. It's a utility project, really. Um, it was one of the first auto-generative projects on Wax, and that was me really dipping my toes in and understanding the capabilities and, and as a project owner, understanding and a creator what's possible on, on Wax. Um, and that project's very much still alive, and um, there's stuff coming for that in the in the in the future. Um, but that really got me thinking about what's possible on Wax and seeing how the other games that are out there currently, like say, like there was Our Planet, and 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 like you looked at like the Green Rabbit sale, Nova Rally, and all the like the uplift. All of these people that were just doing such diverse things on Wax, and I was like, okay, everyone seems to be doing some really great things here, um, and. So then the other side of it was I've played games my entire life. Um, from a very young age, a console gamer, um, then took up PC gaming, uh, League of Legends, um, RuneScape, games like that. Um, and yeah, and just I, f I have a feel for, due to my experience in gaming, like what, what, what gamers like, what they don't like, um, how we can do things sustainably as well in the future. Um, so, so that was where it really sort of merged into one. So I was looking at what I'd done with Kickback and what was the capabilities there, the relationships that I'd built, and and the yeah, like the capability of being able to create things, and then taking that with my uh, understanding of games from a player's perspective and trying to merge them together. So it's not just me that's behind Zos. Um, I've got a fantastic partner in uh, in, in Letos. I believe he's in the YouTube chat at the minute in the comments. Um, and, and Letos is a very similar um, person to me uh, in terms of gaming as well. Um, but he understands the numbers and the mechanics behind games to a level that I could only dream of being at. So, so we, he, he understands that side of things and we, we, we work really well together to, uh, to, to build at least the idea of what we're trying to aim for. So if we can implement, if we can implement what we're aiming to do, then it, it, should, be, uh, it should be successful and... Uh, Hopefully, a sustainable economy as well is uh, is the main main focus. Yeah, and creating a game and getting the balance uh, balancing is very hard. Uh, I mean, all of the major games, if if there are a PvP, some kind of PvP function in, in that game, there will be unbalances that has to be be matched. And when you when you go on on the blockchain. Uh, some of these can be hard to, to change in the future. So uh, what, what's your, like, okay, before we go forward, before we go into, into the, the technical aspects, describe for yep. people what the uh, Zombie Outbreak Survival is and what you plan to do with it. Yeah, absolutely. So Zombie Outbreak Survival is, um, we've, we've been describing it as a, it's a, it's a resource management um, strategy MMORPG. And that, that's a mouthful, but I'll break it down. So the resource management aspect, um, all of your assets that you get, um, uh, let's call them resources. So you've got your survivors, you've got weapons and shields off the outset and, and food as well. 
So the idea is that you aren't a survivor, but you are managing either a survivor, a single survivor, or a group of survivors through the apocalyptic world that has now come to be. So the the, the story is basically you're in you're in a little quiet town of Nitel, that's the name of the town, and you wake up one day and the virus has broken out. And how would you go about surviving, basically? So um, we have a re you have a survivor. That survivor's grabbed the first weapon and the first shield that they've seen to defend themselves. So we've got baseball bats, uh, hoodies with uh, mag magazines wrapped around them for extra protection, uh, trash can lids, things like that. Um, and the idea is let's let's now live in this apocalyptic world um, and and build rebuild society and see what that looks like. So. Initially, um, the first game mode that will come out will be supply runs. And supply runs are pretty much you see is what you get. You go out, you try and find more food, more weapons, more shields, better weapons, better shields, um, and then build your armory up and, and start building a bit of a supply of food so that you can be sustainable and, and get through this world without dying, basically. <laughs> and and that's the idea yeah and and how will that work uh how how will you go out for these supply runs uh what can people expect in form of uh, user interface and and uh, clients and everything like that yeah so it's going to be um pretty much um the, a similar sort of aspect to what you're seeing on wax at the moment so it'll be web-based um menu selection really to start with um so you will select which survivor you want to take out on a supply run. You select which weapon and which shield. Obviously, the better weapons, you will get a better score, hit a higher loot table. And shields, the better weapon, less damage taken sort of thing. Select your duration. So we've got four-hour duration. And, and the duration modeling was very specifically for one reason. And that reason being is we know a lot of people on WAX have got full-time jobs, families, etc. So this. <laughs> This current thing, exactly, yeah, exactly right, Anders. So, um, this current theme of um, people having to mine every hour or every two hours isn't sustainable, and it allows for the breeding of like bot farms and things like that to get an advantage. Now, we thought, well, how can we minimize bots? Because if you offer a game that's got play to earn, someone's going to try and take advantage of it and automate it. That, that's just a given. We know that. So, how can we fix that? So, what we've done is for the supply runs. We've made a four hour supply run, a 12 hour supply run, a one day, a three day, and a seven day supply run. So you can send out your survivors for seven days, come back next week, claim your rewards. So, so for, for a more technical aspect, those survivors, the weapon and the shield that you send on a seven day run goes to our custodial wallet. It stays there seven days, click claim. The survivor weapon and shield will come back to you with your rewards. So that that's the that's the aspect that we're going for. Is there and some type of a risk involved in in sending them away? Uh, currently, so the only thing that currently in terms of risk is you will lose health for taking damage. So you start with a hundred health on your survivor. Your weapons and shields aren't going to break in supply runs, but survivors start with a hundred health, and that health can dwindle down. Now, when that health gets below eighty, um, you will need to heal to be able to then send them back on a supply run. You can't send a survivor that's got 79 or lower health. Um, when the survivor gets, let's say you have a really, really bad supply run and you take a lot of damage and you go to zero health, at this moment in time, death is not implemented. However, it will be coming in the next couple of updates. When the game's launched and, we've, and we're settled in and we know what we're doing, we've done a couple of balance tweaks or whatever, then we will be introducing death. And that'll be, um, that'll look like the survivor doesn't get burnt, but it gets sent to a different wallet. Rather than coming back to the owner, it'll get sent to another wallet. Currently, we're calling that the graveyard. Uh, and then the player will need to send a med kit to that custodial wallet in order to retrieve the survivor, which will be an asset that's obtainable in game for in game currency. Okay. Yeah, so so there will be some kind of punishment. There is uh, is there some kind of plan like success rate of the loot missions or uh So every 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 loot, every supply run will come back with some kind of reward, right? So the 4 hour and the 12 hour supply runs are what we're calling net food positive. So you go out on a 4 hour or a 12 hour 
you come back and you'll more often than not receive more food than you need to heal up. That's the idea. But you won't necessarily find any weapons and shields. It'll be very, 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 very rare to find a weapon or a shield at those four and 12 hours. The one day supply run is like a hybrid. So you've got, you get a little bit of food, not necessarily net positive, maybe sometimes net negative, and a little bit better chance of getting a weapon or a shield. And then when you get to like the three and the seven day supply runs, those are where you get zero food, you get none, no food. We're not going and looking for food in these long, longer duration supply runs. We are looking for weapons and shields. And those loot tables, obviously the seven day is the best loot table. The three day is the worst, uh, the, the worst of the two. And you are guaranteed at least, uh, you are guaranteed a weapon or a shield when you return from a three or a seven day. Um, that will be weighted heavily towards common and uncommon. So to, in order to keep the um, epic plus range of weapons and shields scarce. So that, that's the idea. So shorter supply runs, net food positive, longer supply runs, no food, but, but you'll get a weapon or a shield. Okay, so you will have to do a little bit of both or go to the market and, and uh, get food. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. And... Uh, yeah, so so I'm I'm trying to to contemplate how one one can do this. Uh, how many survivors are there out there currently? Uh, how many people can start playing from the start? Uh, are there more? Well, we can start there. <laughs> yeah. So currently we've got two survivors, um, both of which. So going back to my roots in kickback being auto generative, uh, we we used some of that software that we had um, to generate. Um, one male survivor called Gustav and one female survivor called Meg. And all Gustavs and all Megs are autogen, completely unique. No benefit to either or. Um, the, the attributes have no benefits, but they, it was just to, just to make a complete unique asset for every player that wants to play that that is theirs and nobody else has that one. Um, so there's currently 2,000 Gustavs and 2,000 Megs minted, but only 100 Megs currently are in supply. So um yeah so there's 2100 technically that are out available to get um and you only need one to play the game so in theory right now we could have 2100 players if we if we was to have one per person yeah yeah that, that's uh that's nice um yeah and and uh you, you mentioned before saturday so what happens uh then yeah, so Saturday is our uh, alpha test. So this is where we're first giving... So we have we did a pre-sale to get some assets into the hands of our players in order to do this alpha test. So we, as again, as players on WAX and understanding where projects are and like going through that life cycle with other projects as a player, um, we noticed that everything was being tested on the test net to start with. And they were asking you to put a few hours in to the test net with no reward. And we felt that there was a better way of doing things. So we've sent out a limited number of assets for a very subsidized price or, or subsidized price. And, um, and that was a very successful pre-sale. We got some assets into the player's hands and now we've done enough testing to the point where we're comfortable bringing it to the main net. And we're going to do the alpha test on the main net. And we're going to basically get the players to go in, send some supply runs for 24 hours, so for 24 hours, the window will be open. You will be able to send a seven-day supply run. You will be able to send a three-day supply run. After that 24-hour window um, ends, the ability to send supply runs will be closed, but the ability to claim will still be open. So in seven days' time, players will still be able to come back, claim their assets, and see what rewards they got. And those rewards will be in line with what we aim to release in terms of the loot table percentages as well for the actual game. And, and what is the main uh, idea behind having a 24-hour window open? So calculations, mainly. Um, so we can see um, unique players, uh, how many supply runs are sent out, the proportion of people doing 4, 12, 1, 3, and 7 duration supply runs so that we know roughly where that balance sits, what people are aiming to do, are we farming food, are we going on 7-day supply runs, things like that. And then also looking at what rewards people get and and looking at what the supply and you know the the supply of stuff fresh assets being minted is gonna 
is going to produce. Not only that, from a from project perspective, looking at what resource that costs us in terms of keeping the game running as well. Yeah, that's good. And and I guess like for people like myself, okay, we have 24 hours, then I will do shorter runs until the end and then I will calculate so I get a long run at, at the last minute or, or as close yeah. as possible. Uh, and, I, and I don't think I will be alone uh, thinking like that. Um, so I, I guess a lot of these different type of uh, lengths of missions will be tested, so that's nice. And and the tools, like uh, you said that in the future the, the survivor uh, might end up in the graveyard. What about the tools? Will they break? Will they be uh, destroyed? Will What happens yeah, there? Yeah, so obviously we don't want um, like hyper deflation of our assets. So we have to always look at how we can sync assets um, in terms of uh, the gameplay. So just for context, the assets that are currently minted now, so we've got six weapons and six shields, um, one of each rarity. So common through mythic, the, the standard rarity table that most wax projects use, common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary, mythic. Um, we've got one of each. Those assets will not be obtainable in game. Though they were available for that pre-sale, uh, those that are in circulation now won't be as a reward in loot tables. Yeah. We've now got 21 of each, a weapon and a shield templates created that will reward players. So there's 21 new assets to obtain through supply runs, which will be, I, I, I imagine uh, you could do supply, you could do seven day supply runs for six months and you wouldn't have them all. Like it, there, there is a lot of, a lot of variation there and, and the odds are against people being able to complete them. So that sort of breeds the secondary market to, to be active. Um, but the idea behind that and the reason that we've now got 27 assets for each weapon and shield is because a future game mode that we're going to be delivering will be a strategic battling game mode where you go up against a specific boss and that boss has got specific stats and certain um, weapons and shields will be beneficial against that boss. Not necessarily based on rarity, but weapons will have a, a noise mechanic, a range mechanic and a damage mechanic. And a common long range in a certain circumstance will be better than a mythic short range in a certain circumstance. So there's like a strategic game mode that will be coming out. So players will want to try and collect as many different weapons as they possibly can, which is a good thing. Um, as for sinks, um, further down the line, we're going to be introducing a, a recycling mechanic that will allow players to destroy tools, thinking like, like traditional game modes like, like Rust like on PC, uh, destroy a weapon and get the raw materials from that weapon. Uh, and that raw material will then be used for another game mode that's coming, which will be our buildings and our building upgrades. But when we start, like, um, you know, anchoring down a, a, a group of survivors in a building that want to repair the windows and put some metal sheets up on the windows, wooden sheets on the windows, automatic turrets on the roof, things like that to defend against the horde and defend against um, other survivors that might want to steal their loot as well. And and that will be one way to reduce supply of a lot of things, I guess, because they will burn them to get the material. So that's nice. Yeah. Uh, personally, I have a gun. I have a pistol, and and that feels like a a, a great weapon for for this game. But I, I, without knowing anything, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a good weapon. I think I think pistols are epic. Um, that's yep. a that's a good good start to be to be at. Um, I've been. I've been, uh, I, I ripped a load of packs as well. Um, I was at the mercy of the RNG gods like anybody else through the nefty pools. And I've been buying some pistols off the market as well because I think that for the price point, they were really good. Um, the, the, the numbers, the damage numbers are on the assets so people can see them. Um, and for the price point, I think that the, the pistols were the best price for the damage given on, uh, on Atomic Orb at the time when I was buying them. So I think I bought four or five. Yeah, a hockey stick has a strength of five and a pistol twenty one. So that's uh, yeah. You you don't bring the stick towards to a gunfight, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but okay, so your your white paper, you have a Git page uh, for that. There's a lot of information there for people to break down of the game. You have era zero, which is the outbreak, and then era one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
Uh, five yeah. is called siege. I guess that's when we have the buildings or uh, yeah, guest guesstimate. Uh, yeah, so, so, so sorry. Uh, the the siege mechanic is going to be. Um, this is how we plan on turning communities against each other. So, <laughs> and that sounds really sinister, but um, so the two communities that I always use in the in the example here is uh, the Atomic Kings run by Burst of Energy, and the Sammy Snake Mining Community run by Sammy Snake. And both have got like quite powerful leaders the, the, and a really good following behind them. And no doubt in Zos, when the buildings are released, they will be taking over some buildings. And the idea is we want to do building upgrades where you can upgrade like a turret on your, to, on your building to give some kind of defense. And Whilst that turret is being upgraded, it is it's down for maintenance, so you are weak and vulnerable at that point. But also, you have to deposit the raw materials that you get from recycling the weapons. And there will also be a time um, drain on this. Now, if Burst of Energy and the Atomic King see that the Sammy Snake community are upgrading their turret, and they see that they're at 90% upgraded, they will be able to go and attack that building, Siege, that building and take away some of those resources that are going towards that upgrade and steal them for themselves. And then that'll obviously all be done through custodial. And that upgrade itself will go from 90% back down to like 75%. And then the Sammy Snake community will have to rebuild that upgrade again. That's nice. I, I, uh, like that is one thing that I really miss because we need, you need to feel like, one of the most fun part about playing games is that you have some kind of risk. You, 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 want to, you want to have this feeling that you don't want to make a mistake because it really sucks. Uh, one of the, some games like that, like Rust is an obvious game, Ark Survival Evolved is an obvious game, or like a real-time strategy game like uh, I'm a big StarCraft 2 player from, uh, from the back or lead... lead uh, a MOBA or something, if you make a mistake, you get punished and you get punished hard. And, yeah. and a lot of these NFT games they, that we have seen so far, uh, they, they lack that a little bit. Uh, and uh, that makes me happy that you have this kind of uh, uh, risk. So you really need to plan out the upgrades and not just leave them halfway done. And uh, yeah. you need a lot of teamwork to make it happen. So that's good. Um, that's nice, but if if we take the the era, so uh, I guess we are <clears throat> below uh, era zero, or is are we in the zero now? We're, we're we're in era zero, yeah. So era zero was anything before gameplay. Um, that was basically the pre-sale, um, building up the community, getting people in that are interested in zombies, um, and the zombie genre, getting people into the community, uh, doing a little bit of marketing building the actual game like template and the blueprint and the white paper and things like that. And the final thing that we'll do for era zero will be the alpha test. So we are coming to the end of era zero now, which is great. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, let's, uh, well, like we, we mentioned siege, which is uh, era five. And for someone that don't know anything, they have never heard of zombie outbreak survival. Uh, they don't know what to start. They don't know what will come. They haven't taken the time to break down your white paper. Let's quickly walk through what exists now. What is come like? We know what's coming on Saturday already. Uh, yeah. It's the it's the test, and and what uh, do we have? Some loose roadmap or or uh, something uh, moving forward? Yeah. So one of the one of the uh, things I've been asked to do by the team, myself and Lewis, we sort of delegate certain roles. One of the things I've been asked to do is lead the way on the new website. So that will be coming in the very near future hopefully next couple of days, a week max. Um, and that website will have a new roadmap on it and, and things like that. Um, the loose roadmap is let's get this alpha test done. Let's understand where we sit from a, from a um, project point of view. And then let's get the game in the player's hands and let's have a live game being played 24 uh, seven. That's the first thing that we absolutely need to achieve. Then after that, it'll be a case of um, we're going to do a cooperative game mode as well. So straight after supply runs, we're going to be then building up towards uh, multiplayer supply runs. So that'll be teams of three going against the going against the algorithm, uh, just like you would in single player. Um, but teams of three, 
And then that'll be the way that players can actually earn our universal currency, uh, which will be a uh, currency called Zilver, hopefully, currently. That's the plan. Uh, and Zilver will be used for the in-game shop to buy those med kits for when Death Mechanic comes out. Um, it'll be it'll be used to buy into certain game modes in the future as well. So we're going to have like a Zilver gateway in order to be able to do a certain game mode, and that'll act as like a restrictive mechanic so that players can't just spam certain game modes uh, and things like that. So, so ultimately, supply runs, supply runs multiplayer, and then battles. And then after battles, that's when we start getting towards these these really, really complicated ideas with buildings and the siege mechanic and things like that, where we will need to significantly ramp up our team to achieve those. Um, currently, it's it's total, totally possible. We're really, 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 that is our main aim to get those end game mechanics uh, live and working. Um, but yeah, so it's just a case of this successful foundation that we can build upon and getting these supply runs out and making it work. Yeah. And uh, your team, like there is a page where we can see members in your team. So quickly break, break down. You already mentioned one guy, uh, which is the co-founder. Uh, how many are you? What are you guys doing? Uh, and where so, are you located really? Yeah. So we're a remote team, um, like quite a few places, like quite a few teams on wax now. Um, like the world <laughs> yeah 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 so um actually that team page is out of date we've actually employed a couple more people now um so we've got myself and letos we're the founders uh this game is our idea uh we, we've built it up and then obviously brought people in so we've got myself and letos we've got um doi who's our smart contract developer um lead smart contract developer really 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 intelligent guy like EOS savvy, um, blockchain savvy, knows his stuff. Um, he's leading the development of the blockchain and the smart contract side of things. We've got our artists. Um, so we have we have two artists with us. We've got Zayas and Jason, uh, two great guys. One guy lives in Spain, the other guy lives in Venezuela. Um, all of the artwork that you see for Zos, um, minus the packs, we did those freelance. Um, that's all their stuff. That's all their stuff. They've done it for the team. Um, fantastic guys. And then we've just recently taken on two new web developers as well. Um, uh, again, two great guys as well. Uh, and then we and then we freelance some other bits and bobs that we need to have done as well. So currently, we've got a small compact team. Really, um, really integrated with each other. Always talking every day. Um, through the different, obviously different channels, and yeah, we have like a daily stand-up where we have like a have like a targets for the day, targets for the following day, and then completed tasks at the end of the day as well. So, yeah, the, the team's really good. We're really happy with the team. We're always looking to expand, but currently, we are where we're at. We know where we're at. We are going to need some more funding at some point, otherwise we'll we'll run out of steam. Um, so there there is a main sale coming up. Um, we're going to try and think of some um interesting in new ways of doing a sale so that so that it doesn't just constantly feel like you're just being bombarded with packs um we, we, we've got a couple of ideas i don't want to go into that just yet um but yeah we have got a couple of ideas of of options that we have there um but ultimately games need development and uh and yeah that's where we're at nice so you have uh, a lot of people working on a lot of different uh, aspects so that's that's awesome and yeah um looking forward to see what what type of new uh, new sale you're, you guys are gonna do so that's awesome um like packs are really fun it is kind of addictive to open packs uh but sometimes you want like it's nice to also be able to go to the market and choose and and uh sure you can do that on the second hand market uh but perhaps you can do do things for games in a primary sale that make that speaks more for for players in a good way um but i guess packs can be that as well it is uh it is not only how, what you sell or how and everything so yeah so we are, we are, we will still have packs uh packs are like that's standard on wax like that's that's one of the things that we all love right like yeah. i absolutely love ripping packs um so we will still have packs um 
definitely that'll be the majority of the sale. Um, but there are a couple of other options that we want to want to have a look at. We, and again, we're, we're very early on looking at how we're going to do that main sale. We're, everything in the team has been focused on this this alpha and getting the gameplay out. Um, whereas some projects go straight for thinking about the most the most important thing to them is thinking about how to get the sale done. Yeah. We've really, really sort of figured out the gameplay and getting that out first, and then we'll look at the main sale afterwards as a secondary thing. We're not we're not um we're not focused on that right now we're focused on the gameplay that's uh yeah that's uh, such a crazy concept to focus on the, the actual product instead of just uh, <laughs> just getting money uh <laughs> i mean i mean you need funding you, you there, uh, if you need to hire people which you do to build a project you need to have funding and nfts can be a great way to get some kickstarter funding for a project but then you also need to focus on the actual product and don't forget about it yeah which sadly uh, some project has uh, forgotten about focusing on uh, on what's important well it's really uh, interesting because dur- during the time that i've been on wax since obviously december 2020 we've seen we've seen the meta of like creating a project change and and the meta used to be a very good white paper and a smile could sell a 250 to three hundred thousand dollar sale or even like a 1.5 million dollar sale that we've seen a couple of times and then silence for like six months during the development phase that they're now spending this money and then building a game but that meta has since changed and like it's almost not acceptable now to to start a project without at least at least a working alpha or something very close on the test net um you know a, a a discord community that's already active a telegram community um and like a website with certain elements on that website and stuff and a lot of that's being driven by the atomical whitelisting which is great i think the atomical whitelisting uh, is fantastic and 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 probably needs to go a little bit further um but yeah so we've seen that meta change from being able to sell out a sale with people's just anticipation and hype all the way to now it's not acceptable to do something without something already tangible that the players can players can see. So we're really trying to go beyond that, and and you know we want to achieve a live mainnet product before we start looking at extra funding for development. That's uh, <laughs> that's good. And we have some questions in the chat about survival pass. So what is that, and what can people expect from that in the future? So the early survivor pass um, was a promotion that we ran in the very early days, and they were given out totally free of charge to our community members. I think it was the first first four hundred community members got a pass each, and then we had a hundred that we gave away um, through people that were like late, like that weren't in the first four hundred. They were late to the party for the first four hundred. But we're very active in the community, answering questions, very interacted, things like that. So we gave those passes out. So all 500 were given out. I gave away um, five. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So we, we did different giveaways. Uh, we got other people that we that we respect and trust in Wax, and we and we gave some to their communities as well. So Anders gave some out too. And the idea behind those passes were three things. So we wanted people to have access to the pre-sale, of which they did. Uh, they're going to have some kind of exclusive access to a level of the main sale so that they won't have competition, which is, again, part of what we've seen in terms of meta for the for the way that packs have been done recently, going from totally public that we're just getting bot yeah. raided to like having a whitelist pass. So they're going to have some kind of um, exclusivity in the main sale. And then also, one thing that we noticed as players was people buying expired whitelist passes and things on the market and being and being burnt by the idea that these assets that have got no use case can be sold on the market and then all of a sudden they're worthless so what we've done is our final mechanic for those passes will be you can redeem them for a limited edition survivor that we have that we haven't released yet it'll be an entirely new survivor and whereas our current survivors have got 2000 max supply this survivor will only have a 500 max supply. It'll be created purely for these pass holders, and you would have to redeem your pass for that survivor. So that takes the element of if this if this asset is on the market, it always has a use. And then when it comes off the market, it's been redeemed for a survivor, and then we burn that asset. 
So yeah. you will, if you was to buy one of those passes, it will always, always, always have at least one more utility that can be used, and that is to redeem it for that survivor. And Nick is uh, is uh, saying maybe his name will be Shad. So is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> um, yesterday, I was on Sammy's stream yesterday, and someone was talking about Gustav being a Chad. And I said, well, maybe we need to create a Chad survivor. So who knows? Maybe that could be the guy that we, uh, it was a limited 500. Yeah, that's, uh, that's nice. I actually just went to the market and got myself an, an extra one just, uh, just so I have it. <laughs> Uh, because I did not uh, get one of those from the start. I gave them away and I went to the market and bought packs earlier. So I didn't have one. So now I have one. Um, so that's good. And yeah, so, so your game seems to be a lot of uh, complexity, a lot of moving aspects. Uh, what happens like... We have now Saturday, people can start to play it, then you go and analyze numbers and you, and you take it to the next step. Uh, do we have some, uh, some uh, roadmap with dates after that in the short term, or uh, is it everything based on, on users? So it totally depends on what we, uh, what we find. So hopefully, if all things go well, we, we've already got a couple of things that we want to improve on that we're not going to change now before the stress test, certain UI developments and and things like that, things that, that would be like soft changes that we can do um, after the stress test that won't impact it. So there are a couple of things um, that we will need to go down for, fix, well, improve, and then and then go live. So notwithstanding, notwithstanding any major flaws or issues that we come across, um, yeah, it's, we we want to be live as soon as the as soon as we possibly can. So. Uh, I don't want to give dates. Dates always get held held to your neck. Um, but yeah, just just know that if there's nothing major that comes 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 up, um, it'll it'll be very soon, very very soon. That's nice. Um, yeah. So on top of that, like if we take all the games on on uh, on Wax or other blockchains, play to earn NFT games, uh, which which is your favorite? Which ones do you think have uh, have like <laughs> a lot? Of, if we go backwards, we have a lot of innovations. So if you compare those released uh, in the first days to compare to now, they are very different because it has changed. The standard has changed. The way you do it has changed. But they innovated the path forward, so perhaps they are not as exciting as some of the new ones in some aspects. But they can be uh, awesome for other reasons. Uh, yeah. So I think I think that the the topical one at the moment is is obviously our planet and their changes that they're making. Um, back in the day, our planet was like the the center of wax, and I re I remember joining telegrams and everyone the, the the message just being spammed when our planet's taking when our planet's yep. taking when our planet's taking on everything um so so to see the 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 you know the the journey where we've come from our planet which again a fantastic concept an absolutely fantastic concept and and things have gone up and down in the in, in on their journey and and to be honest i don't play our planet anymore um but but the memories that were made in that Discord, in that Telegram, and, and things like that, our planet is by far one of the most highlighted and standout projects on Wax of that year. Um, yep. But in terms of today, uh, where do I sit in projects that I'm really excited about? Um, so you've got, uh, obviously, Nova Rally. Sammy's a very good friend of mine. Uh, Nova Rally, Sammy's looking at making a huge... Um, Re, re revamp of the game um again he, he came from a similar similar background player on wax um had his community decided to want to make a little game with his community it then went crazy massive and now the learning curve that he's had with nova rally i'm benefiting from for my project because obviously i've got people telling me oh don't do this don't do that sammy did this and it went wrong and sammy's saying oh yeah just just probably think about this and initially we was going to use mutable attributes on a lot of our nfts and like one of the advices that we were given is don't use mutable attributes put them in a table instead it, yes players can't see them on atomic hub but it's a lot easier to to make the changes within the smart contracts if they're in a table and things like that so so we did that like we, we've got a lot of advice so nova rally is going to be up there as one of the first projects i'll always say i'm interested in um but then you like krypton quest 
I, I don't know the owners, so I am purely just a player in that one. Krypton Quest's UI is fantastic. Um, a really smooth game to play. Uh, I, I quite like Dragon's Valley as like a fun little game to play as well. Like that's it's simple. It's basically Crypto Blades, but on uh, on on wax. So that's a fun game as well. Uh, yeah, there's there's loads of games. I mean, uh, Burst of Energy always says um, to his stream when he's talking about me, he'll say there's not a project on wax that Deej isn't involved in as a player or whatever. Like I've bought, I bought, I try and buy everything. I try and get involved in everything. I even remember buying slices. Um, <laughs> any observation slices when they first came out. So like, there, yeah, there just, is, just a, there is actually a, a use case coming for them that has like, I have had things, uh, partly done since June. <laughs> uh, which is uh, it's it's a long long time, but then I had to start to to deal with all the legal le legalities and boring shit, and and uh, yeah, uh, and then I bought a, yeah. a farm and moved, and and uh, I got a lot of things to take care which of. It looks fantastic, by the way. Absolutely, Thank it you. looks amazing. Uh, I, I love the home gym. Yeah, the the home gym is nice. It's a nice add-on. Uh, lately, I've also been like it's a. It's supposed to be later in another room where I have heating. Right now I don't have it and it's Sweden and winter, so it's kind of cold. cold. So uh, I, I go to another gym to train now until I have finished a heated gym. Or, uh, yeah. or well, spring and summer I can do it here again. Uh, so that's awesome. But as long as you're doing your bare peas, that's all that matters, right? Ex exactly, I do them every day. <laughs> no, no, I haven't missed a single day so far since uh, December, so that's nice. Fantastic. Uh, I've missed a couple. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get back on it now. Yeah, but as you said, there are a lot of different uh, projects and dipping your toes and testing them and playing with them. It is a lot of fun and you learn a lot from it. Uh, so it be, will be interesting to see how you can apply that and, and whatever what happens with, uh, with that moving forward with uh, Zombie Outbreak Survival. What's uh, yours? What are, your t what are your highlights? What are your favorites? Obviously, one of the big ones is Alien Worlds for many reasons. Uh, they nailed the economic model from the start. The mining is just a token distribution model. It is not the, the game. What I'm disappointed with, however, is that we don't see Thunderdome, we don't see Council, which has been announced and, and coming soon. But soon has <laughs> been a, a very long time now. Uh, we did see some some releases with the, the missions, but that that felt like just yeah, something to to delay the other aspects. And I mean, uh, council. I can understand the longer it takes, the more money it is in each planet. The long the more risk it is for them to activate them. They have to think of a lot of probably legalities. They also have to think of yeah. different uh, worst case scenarios. How to minimize that? What can they do? Uh, should they lock some of the tokens and release back to the planet over time to prevent that someone just comes and claim them? And if people don't know, uh, each planet on Alien Worlds is a DAO, so the, it will be controlled by the users and they get uh, TLM every day that they can do whatever they want with, which is a great like VC fund to invest in projects that b that benefits the, the Alien Worlds ecosystem. But it's also if you are a big whale, you have a lot of trillium, you and your friends vote for yourself, you take all the trillium in the planet and you leave. Uh, that's also yeah. possible. Uh, yeah. And I don't know how much it is right now. I think it's like 20 million trillium in Kavian uh, wow. alone. So that's a, that's a lot of, a lot of money. Uh, so I understand it, but also I don't understand it. It should have been released uh, uh, a long time ago. Um, mm. And on top of that, I mean, I do like that our planet are doing changes right now. Um, some people started to talk about it again, maybe a little bit too late, maybe a little bit... Uh, um, they have prom made promises before that they have gone back on now, which is uh, not a great look. Um, it's always difficult, always difficult to defend that, isn't it? Yeah, and also... Uh, they, that they changed, they announced that they were going to change, so if you claim, you will burn everything outside of your pot. But what they should have done is they should have forced everyone to claim before that change, so it yeah. didn't go backwards. Perhaps people don't pay attention to their Medium post or their, or their Twitch channel, and they are not aware of this update, and then people start to talk about it, they come back, and hey, I can't claim my 
I've seen multiple hundreds of millions of ether. They can't claim it. It's impossible. Uh, and and that uh... that's, that's me as well. I'm I haven't claimed yet because I forgot to claim. I, I didn't even know about it. I didn't read the medium post, and now I'm yeah. sat here like, what do I do? So I'm yeah. just I'm just leaving. It. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I I was aware of it. I was too lazy to go and claim it. I lost fifty million ether in it, so it's it's a shank, but it's not the end of the world. Um, but it's fun. I my project is doing is my NFTs are doing great there. They are in the in the top. Uh, five last time I checked, so that's nice. Um, mm-hmm. And then I don't know which projects I'm most excited about on Wax. I mean, I, I, I guess BC Brawlers. What what will happen with them when they come out? Um, from the chat yesterday um, with Mike, I I got a lot of a, a big positive feeling about that. A lot of hype for, for that project and long term. They have thought about a lot of things. I like that they don't disclose all the information directly. They hide yeah. a lot of it. Uh, they make it a little yeah. bit more exciting. Uh, I'm not a fan of wrestling. That's the only negative part of that. It, wrestling don't get me excited at all. Um, I don't know. There are a lot of big and, and, and nice projects on Wax. Uh, mm. And there's more and more games where you have some kind of playable interaction but we are still to see uh, one that is uh, 100% correct and I don't think yeah. I'm not sure that we will ever do uh, and I don't, I'm not sure that we have to have one project pleasing most people um, so I don't know I used to play a text based uh, strat- strategic game a long time ago where you basically do what mo- many wax games do now, but you chose a, a race and each uh, X amount of time you got some resources and then you upgraded your base and army and then you went and raided other players. Everything was text-based, no graphics, and it was fun. <laughs> the, the game was built around the community. You sat and chatted about people, had strategi- strategies. You made plans for the age and then when the age ended, you, it started again from the, the beginning and you tried to have a better strategy than last time. And, and you didn't know if an age was one month or if an age was 18 months. I think the longest one was over two years. Uh, and the shortest one was about a month, uh, which <laughs> make it very hard for people to, ex- to know what to expect. So they come. Mm. And, and I like that. Like it, it was always announced one week uh, until game, until age reset. Uh, so you had a week uh, to prepare, but uh, that could mess up your strategy pretty hard. That um, sounds fun. That sounds like a good game. Yeah, it, it was nice. It, it's surely not for everyone, uh, but it was fun. You had a big community. It was an, on the IRC day, so we, we uh, sat on IRC and had uh, <laughs> chats about it. Um, but that's, that's uh, all fun. And, and I think there are more projects coming and that I didn't mention that I really uh, are excited about. Uh, there was a few months now that I felt like everything was just the same. Nothing was happening. Uh, the tokenomic models of most games, they are doomed. It's just a question of when, not, uh, not if they will crash. Uh, so it will be see- fun to see what projects have learned from, uh, from the existing ones. Uh, I, think that, I think that comes back full circle to what you were saying about no punishment. And some of these games, that are these, these economy simulators and, and like these resource gathering and, and nothing else, yeah. um, where you can on- only carry on building and building and building and crafting and then and then building your supplies and, and hoping that someone will buy stuff off you that you list. I mean, it's just, it's just made to fail. Uh, eventually it will fail. And unless you can introduce syncs and game modes where people genuinely are entertained playing, you're not going to retain people. People are going to sell to make some of their ROI back. And, and, and then people will, will, will eventually stop playing because the rewards aren't there or whatever. So yeah, you're totally, totally correct with that. Yeah. I'm I'm really looking forward to some kind of uh, like what what people see as a metaverse now I guess is like uh, sandbox the central land and things like that where you go in you have a piece of land and you can do pretty much whatever you want there I'm looking forward to have something like that that is actually fun and engaging uh, I'm not a fan of the central land uh, I'm not a fan of what I've seen so far on sandbox uh, I do, however, own land on Sandbox. I don't do it on the Central Land, and there are a few other ones, but like we don't have anything like that on Wax. The bi- the closest thing is a, is a Minecraft world, 
uh, which has their own drama. Uh, Uplift World has, <laughs> has their own drama. So, um, I mean, I, I really hope they are able to to make something of that. But uh, you're limited to well, Minecraft. You can do a lot of things, but you're also limited by mi Minecraft. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's an old game. Uh, but it's an awesome game, so it, it's a, it's a limited thing. Uh, I don't know what we will see, what what the Wax Studio will do with everything on Wax now. Uh, yeah, we've got Immersus as well. Immersus on Wax as well. So there are there, there are people popping up, and I think that the yeah. metaverse is something that I think a lot of projects need to explore and how they can create some kind of metaverse. Um, we've certainly looked at it. Uh, we're we're in no no position to create a metaverse. Um, not big, not big money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're not we're not currently in that position. Um, the closest thing that we're going to get to a metaverse this year will be our interactive live game map. So we're going to have Nitel constructed the town of Nitel constructed onto like a like almost like a top down game map that will be uh, showing all of the buildings that people will own. And then you can click on the building, and then when you click the building, it a bit like what Prospectors looks like, right? So yeah. you click the building, and then it's a unique building within that interface, and you can join that building and and or leave, so on and so forth. Um, and that's going to be like our 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 system to getting a step closer towards that metaverse. Um, like I say, we have looked at it. It's not something we can do at our current size. Um, but if we find successes in everything that we're currently doing, there's no reason why we won't be looking at potentially having some kind of third person or first person uh, environment where you can walk around Nitel, chill with your friends, sit in a sit in a front room, living room of someone's house that's now boarded up, um, and do things like that. So it's something that's very, 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 very far down in the future, and it's a very big aspiration, but uh, currently not realistic and. Uh, it'd be nice if we was to get there, but we've got a lot of successes that we need to have first. Yeah, and and you also need to focus on on the small aspects and make them really really well, uh, which mm. is like one one problem a lot of projects has uh, in this space in general is that they see things that are shiny and they jump into it and then they get bored and they jump into the next thing. Yeah. I have a bunch of projects that I really liked that re re looked exciting, but the the founders or team members just stopped caring or didn't care as much and they just got a little bit lazy. They started focusing on other things, which is normal, but it's not great if you want to build something. You really need to have a passion for it. You really, you really need to want to create something uh, yeah. for it to last. And that is uh, difficult. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean uh, yeah, it's it's almost like marriage when you start a project you don't like till death do us part almost right so when i have a very i've got quite a quite a conscience so i don't want to say to people come and buy my assets and then i'm going to leave in six months time like i think it's very important that as a project owner you accept responsibility that when you start a project that project can't just disappear it can't just die it can't you've got to do to the best of your ability everything that you can do to provide what you set out to provide and if you if you can do that then everyone will be happy and if you if you try your best and that still fails it's a difficult conversation to have but at least you tried your best yeah exactly if you're, if you're just blatantly ignoring things and and, and and moving on to the next opportunity or the next project or it doesn't hold your attention then don't start it in the first place yeah if if you if you sell nfts you get people that support your project you get funds and then you suddenly decide to cut all funds for a project to focus on another thing uh as has happened by by a, a team so they split into two teams one team that thought it was wrong and one team that uh, hasn't commented on it as far as i know uh and if you don't know what that that was about uh good for you <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah uh that's not how it should be if you fail on a project that's one thing if you make mistakes because you you were unexperienced that's one thing uh if you just bluntly stop with something or uh just abandon it for no reason and then then that's uh, wrong in my eyes absolutely um, totally agree with you yeah yeah, so that's uh, 
Yeah, that's that's the drama. Let's let's not dig into that more. Uh, <laughs> save that one. Yeah. Save that one for another day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Im Immersis that you talked about, I have an interview book with them in in March, so I, we will uh, dig into that here as well. Oh, fantastic! Uh, yeah, I mean, I picked up one of the apartments that they were auctioning off uh, a couple of weeks ago, or it might have been last week. Um, and I actually spoke to their owners at um, Digicon, uh, Digicon Seven yeah. that had just 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 happened. And we were sat chatting, and that's what made me want to buy a, a a property in there. So they told us about the upcoming auctions. So uh, that was highlighted to me, and then I uh, I pulled the trigger on one as well. So yeah, the, those guys look like what they're doing is really good. I like the fact that you can put NFTs into their game um, as a project owner. We're going to probably look at doing something like that. I know Sam is looking at it, and the Stratton Stratton Studios guys, Josh over there, is uh, looking at getting some go karts in there as well. So. There's a lot of cool things going on, and I like the way that on Wax everyone collaborates. Um, for the most part, people yeah. collaborate and want to help help each other and um, do like cross project um, opportunities and and help each other in that sense. I, I don't think we get that on quite a lot of the other projects, uh, all the protocols and blockchains. No, I, I don't think not not in the same way at least. Not what I've seen, but I might have missed it because I do spend most time in the Wax community. Uh, so if I missed it, that's fine. But I I kept my eyes open and I have not seen as much collaboration. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that's good. So uh, to summarize, what what is uh, zombies uh, zombie outbreak survival? What are you guys doing? What can pe people expect in the near future from you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Zombie Outbreak Survival, uh, strategic resource management game, uh, MMORPG on WAX. Um, we've got a really ambitious um, roadmap. Uh, single player coming first, cooperative player coming next, um, versus and PvP coming later on down the line. Um, Saturday, stress test, alpha test, uh, getting an idea of... Uh, how players are going to play the game and what that looks like from a project management perspective. Um, all you need to play on Saturday is uh, one survivor, one weapon, and one shield, and then you'll be able to play. Um, play. Play link will be on our website. Play link will be on our Discord, on our Twitter. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much pretty much everything for Zos. Um, we will, like I say, we will be doing a main sale at some point in the next couple of weeks. Well next few weeks um which will be to fund uh, further development of the game uh, we are going to look at different ways that we can do that sale as well so that it doesn't feel like um just a bombardment of different things to purchase so uh yeah that's pretty much everything thank you for having us on anders uh it's been great i uh, really like talking to you um yeah you've been a help over the last year or two whenever we've had questions whenever we've needed help Anders is always one of the guys we come to and speak to in Telegram, on Twitter. Um, between Anders and his fantastic community, people like Nick, uh, you always get an answer when it comes to things that are based around the blockchain as well. So uh, now it's been great to uh, to come on and and yeah, uh, thank you ever so much for everything that you do for us. Yeah, thank you a lot. And and for today, by the way, for everyone that is here watching, we actually have a giveaway. Uh, sponsored by Dish uh, for some survival outbreak survival si <laughs> zombie outbreak survivals. That's a that, uh, mouthful today for me. Uh, where you whatever you have to do to to share this. So we have free survivals. We have to so get some some gear and uh, you can set everything that you need to start. We also have a survival crate that we can give away. So four winners. And whatever you do to win this is that you share this video. On Twitter, you add the hashtag SOSWAX, which is uh, ZOS Wax as one hashtag, or that, that would be perfect. Uh, and, and you can uh, partake in this and you have a chance to win. So SOSWAX is the, is the hashtag. I will add it in the chat so people can see it. Um, and all you need to do is share this, add that hashtag, and with that I can actually uh, find you by a script and I don't have to do it manually which is very, very kind. And I will use uh, the awesome tool by Bounty Block to do this. So it will be all automated for me, which is nice. Um, but that's awesome. I will also write this on Twitter so people can find it. Uh, thanks for coming on, Dish. Thanks for sh uh, sharing everything and for building a project. Uh, I will look forward to engage and see what happens.
Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you. It's been uh, it's been great. Thanks for watching. Peace. A Bitcoin ball is all I got left. Sold my house, gold no less. Was a sucker, hard hands. This man stronger than the.